people. Let's say amen for him. Come on, praise the Lord, saints. Come on, praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Give God some praise today. Tell God thank you. Oh, yes, tell him thank you this morning. Amen. We thank God for, amen, Ellen Brooks, amen, getting the service started. Amen. I told, I heard him tell them they can start shouting at home. Amen. I said, that's fine because they got homeowners or renters insurance. So if they break something, they're going to have to pay for it. They ain't at the house, in the church. So amen. Thank God for, amen, getting the service started. Good morning to each of you, even you that are out in Facebook land. Amen. YouTube or even uh, on Zoom and these musicians and close ones that are here to keep this the message of gospel of Jesus Christ going forward. I thank God this morning for life, health, and strength. I thank God for what he's doing for me. I thank God for what he's doing for you. I thank God what he's doing for us because, amen, the Bible has declared this is the day that the Lord has made. And he didn't say let you rejoice. He said let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's something about the teamwork on praise. When the teamwork of praise get together and begin to praise, amen, things begin to happen. There's times in the Bible where people began to praise and walls fell in. There was places in the Bible where people began to praise and dead folk got up and began to walk again. You don't understand what praise can do. Praise has the ability to go where you cannot go, do what you cannot do, fix what you broke anyway, and make it work out all right. Somebody ought to say thank you this morning. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I see that Ellen Brooks has got things started up in this morning. Amen. And I feel the fire. Amen. Moving all around us. Amen. Thank God. Amen. We are able to operate within the limits of what a man has asked us to do. Amen. And God has picked up right there. I'm so mindful. My mother always tells me, son, if you do your part, God's going to do his. And we have made the effort and we've made the decision to be right here this morning. And that means God going to pick up where we we where we are and he's going to take care of things. I'm so glad that we serve a God that can pick up broken pieces and put them back together again. I'm so glad we serve a God that knows how to take things that are out of place and put them back in place. Oh, thank you this morning. I'm excited about Jesus. Amen. Not about me, uh, not about nobody else, but I'm excited about Jesus because he has rescued me. I tell people all the time why I love the Lord. Why? Because he saved me from myself. Amen. He didn't save me from the drug deal. He didn't save me from this gang. He didn't save me from the police. My worst enemy is myself. And I thank God for saving me from myself. I don't want to delay the hour this morning, but once again, we thank you for joining us from wherever you are. And I'm going to ask that if you have your Bibles, and I pray you do, because the Bible is yet the sword that we must fight with, that we must contend against the enemy with. We're no match without the Word of God. Amen. The Bible lets us know that the Word is sharper than any two edged sword, able to draw those, amen, to us. Amen. Look at Luke this morning, the 10th chapter, if you would. Amen. If we look at Luke chapter 10 this morning, we will start our message from there. And I pray that your heart will be encouraged and strengthened this morning as we go to the word of God. Amen. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yes, I am excited. Praise God. Here we are. Here we are. Amen. Praise God for Jesus. Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If we look at the 10th chapter, I'm looking, amen, at a couple of things God has here for us today. Amen. And if you grab, go to 10th chapter, go to verse number 38. 38. Amen. We're going to read these chapter scriptures, and we're going to pray upon these words of God. Amen. As we look at this verse. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary 
who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister have left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that God, that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you this morning in the beauty of holiness to set forth this word before you. God, we ask that you not only have ordained this word, but sanctify it now, that it be edification to the building up of the souls and the hearers thereof. Lord, take these words and move it through the airways, and Lord, deposit it into the ears and hearts of those that hear, that God, they may be better at the end thereof. We thank you for the opportunity to be used as a vessel of honor and not dishonor to your people and the word. We pray now, God, that you strengthen and encourage and renew, save those that are lost, reclaim the backslider, set the captive free, God. In the name of Jesus, we claim that right now. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. 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 Well, saints. I think Elder Brooks said it earlier this morning, here we are. First Sunday of the last month of 2020. December is here and the official Christmas holiday has started. I chose to go out for a little bit yesterday and pick up a few things and trying to be careful as I can be and got back in, but there's no doubt based on the streets and the business in the streets that the holiday Christmas season is here. Trees are up, lights are on, decorations are everywhere around us. For many, this is a joyous occasion. For others, they are dreading the moment. Don't get it confused and believe that everybody right now is excited as you are. Don't get it confused and believe that everybody is happy as you are. Because, amen, this, all, this has been uh, communicated so much that we must understand that, that the battle is still going on. But how many of you know that the battle is not yours but the Lord's? The battle is not yours, not mine, but the Lord. Even with the medical relief from the dreaded COVID-19 pushing its way into the market, into the communities, there are some that are not able to share in this exciting moment. They are not able to share that even though we've been through some things, they have a saying that I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Right ahead, I can see a small glimpse of a light. Well, these that are not able to share the joy of this moment has found themselves a victim of something we all at some point have dealt with. The victim of something we've all may find ourselves, not even not now, but maybe at some other occasion, but somewhere in our life, we're going to find ourselves a victim of what we call frustration. I like to talk to you this morning about blinding frustration blinding frustration. I mean, many are, as we see, go back and forth, are what we call financially strained, medically strained, physically strained, mentally strained. 2020 has set many down dead-end streets and broken uh, boulevards and winding ways and sent them only to end up back where they started at the beginning of the year. Yes, 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 yes. Seemed like it was only yesterday we was facing New Year's Eve and saying, God, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and excited. And here we are right now again back at that place and said, Lord, I'm going to do this. A lot of things that you had your heart set on this year did not work out the way you wanted it to. I can go on to tell you a lot of things I thought would happen this year did not happen. I had looked for progress 
progress in certain areas, and that progress did not come. Not to give the devil the glory, because progress has come in so many other ways. And I dare not stand here today and give him the glory, because he does not give the glory in this, but the Lord give this. But I find myself, once again, at the end of the year, looking to climb over the hill into next year and said, Lord, I, if I will, I can do this. But nevertheless, here we are at the end of this year, at the end, the first Sunday of the last month. Amen. And we're able to share something, as I said earlier, many are not mentally frustrated, emotionally frustrated, financially constrained. Oh, help me, somebody. They are, amen, finding themselves in tight situations. Let me help you understand what frustration is. If I could share with you for a moment, frustration, for Webster says frustration is a feeling or expressing distress and annoyance, especially because of inability to change or achieve or accomplish something preventing me, excuse me, accomplish something. Let me get that to you again. Frustration is considered feeling or expressing distress or annoyance, especially because of the inability to change or achieve or accomplish something. Ah, what you said you was going to do at the beginning of the year, you have not done. Not only it has that definition, but it goes on to say, Something frustration, something prevented from progressing, prevented from succeeding or being fulfilled. Goals have laid by the wayside. Goals have went unanswered or unaccomplished. No matter how much you wanted to do, some goals you haven't even attempted because of the circumstances that we're in. They have to stay on the shelf only to wait for another day. Frustration. It says, we become frustrated because we know that, know what is like, what is like right now. Right now, we're frustrated because we're looking at right now, but we don't really believe it has to be this way. Because we know who God is. We know that we serve an a, a, a all-righteous God. We, we serve a God that can do anything. And sometimes as Christians and as the body of Christ, we know the power of God. We know what God can do, but he has not done that. And we become frustrated because we know he can. And because he has not chosen to, frustration has set in because we know what it's like right now. But we know that it could be different. And we're not going to uh, let you see it this way, but it could be different. But that means it could be better and it could be worse. But we know God has the ability to make things better. When we go down, the bottom line is, when it comes to frustration, my brothers and sisters, it is I have a situation that I don't like, but at this moment, there's nothing I can do about it. Frustration is just in when there's a situation I do not like, but there's nothing on my own I can do about it. It's nothing more frustrating than waiting on something or looking for something that you know from your viewpoint is achievable, but not happening. You know in the right circumstances, I could do this. With the right lineup, I could win the game. With the right team, I can be successful. With the right quarterback, I can be able to set the record. I need with the right point guard, I can be able to take the title. You know if I had the right pieces, I can do this. But, but, but it's frustrating because it's achievable, but it's not happening. Frustration is communicated in so many different ways. Com frustration is communicated at internal, external, verbal, and nonverbal. Frustration may not say a word, but it can be seen on your face. Frustration may not speak, but it makes a sound in your body. Let me share some things with you about frustration and what it can do to people. Some people eat when they're frustrated. Some people fuss and cuss when they're frustrated. Some people fight when they're frustrated. Some people leave and head out the door when they're frustrated. Frustration. When frustrated, some people not only do those things, but when people get frustrated, some people drink. Some people take drugs. 
Some go shopping and some turn to other people. But not only that, frustration will not only make you turn to other people, frustration will make you turn on other people. The very people that you love, the very people that you care about, the very people that have been by your side, the very people that have been with you every step of the way, frustration will cause you to turn on them and begin to treat them in a way that you would not normally do. Well, that is where we are this morning as we look at the scriptures in dealing with Martha today. If we would take a moment and look back into Luke chapter 10, we will see that there's a situation here where Jesus has come and, 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 and finally got into this town. Well, if you would understand, Jesus has traveled quite extensively throughout his ministry. He have had three different uh, what they would call them tours. What Jesus would do, he would go up and down and around the coast of the Sea of Galilee. His ministry never took him too far from the Sea of Galilee, but he would go around the areas of the Galilee. Well, after three tours of doing this, he finds himself on the eastern shore of Galilee and, and has gone through Philippi. He found and made his way now into Judea. And here he is over into Samaria to Judea and they have began to not just execute his ministry, but he began to release his disciples into doing their will of God. The 70 has went out and got a good report. And now that he dealt with the lawyers and the parables of the good Samaritan and began to share how life should be. Now we find himself and now after all this, he needs to take and go back and visit some people that he know. The scripture tells us that if we look at it, it says, now it came to pass as he went that he entered into a certain village and that certain village were what an area of Martha and, and, and Mary. The Lord and his disciples was traveling alone and came to a village. When they got there, the woman named Martha welcomed him, her, in, him into a house. From the appearance of everything so far, Jesus gets there, everything looked like it's all right. He's met at the door by Martha and said, come on in, Jesus. She knows who he is, and she greets him and brings him inside. And the disciples are along the way. And she has a sister, okay, who has taken the time to sit down in front of Jesus. Well, I find now that after reading this story, there's more involved than what we look like. It looked like everything's okay when Jesus gets to the door because she welcomes him with a big smile. How many know you can smile and still be frustrated? Uh, you can greet folks and still be frustrated. You can laugh and still be frustrated. Ah, uh, you can work and still be frustrated. Somebody help me this morning. But frustration, amen, with the, is not a man always something I see, but and what it says on the outside, but it's about what frustration does to me. See, at this moment, Mary Martha is dealing with something called blind frustration. But the problem with frustration is that it can lead to spiritual and emotional blindness. The frustration can lead you to spiritual and emotional blindness. Let me share with you how I come to this conclusion. Blinding frustration. When you're frustrated, you are finding it, it prevents you sometimes from seeing the truth. Well, you may be when you're blind in frustration will cause you and not only to not see the truth, but the side effects of blinding frustration. When you can't see the truth, when you can't see something, you can easily miss it. Hello, somebody. Amen. Ah, I don't know about you, but we've been traveling down the road and my wife said, did you see that over there? And I said, no, I didn't see that. Amen. And she was excited about it, but I didn't see it. So I couldn't share in that excitement. When you're blind to something, you can't share in what somebody else is sharing in. At that moment, I was blind to what she was talking about. Blind frustration will cause you to miss your blessing. Blinding frustration will cause you to fail or see or enjoy what you, what you do have. And because you're frustrated about what you don't have. At least at the moment. Uh, what she is trying to get is causing her to see what she did not see what she has. Let me help bring and get you to the text. Because blind and frustration has affected Martha's ability in this situation to be the woman she want to be. 
burning frustration uh, will cause us to miss some things. Let's look into the word of God as we look at the blinding frustration that set in with them. As it came to pass, Jesus had entered into the house. Now here he is, Martha is ready to receive him. And from the appearance of things, he looked like she knew he was coming because she's already in the process of getting things laid out for him. She has spent some time. Oh, we know how we, we are. You got Christmas coming up and all the dust you didn't get out your house for New Year, for Thanksgiving. You trying to get it out before Christmas. Amen. Even if nobody show up, you want it to look like that. Some of us still believe in Santa Claus. Amen. But we want it to look good. Amen. No matter what. And so whatever I have not gotten right, I'm trying to get it right right now. So, so. Uh, Martha is all around dusting. She's around cleaning. She's around baking. She's around cooking. And she's setting stuff in order because Jesus is on his way. And, 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 and her sister Mary, amen, uh, is there sitting at Jesus' feet. And she has it said, and heard his word. And verse number 40 is where I find myself taking up the text from because it says that, but Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, let's just stop there for a minute before we get to what she said. Because cumbered, my men, when we look at the scripture and look at cumbered, we see uh, there's various scriptures that change that particular word. It says, but Mary, amen, was comforted about with much serving. And that King James says it that way. You look at the English versions that Martha was distracted with much serving. All right. And it says Martha in, 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 in the uh, contemporary version says Martha was worried about all that had to be done. Uh -huh. I'm saying frustration is setting in. Martha was upset over all the work that she had to do. Uh -huh. But Martha was busy in, in the plain English version said, but Martha was busy with serving many things. Serving has caused Martha to now become frustrated. Ah, if I could pause for a moment and be, amen, transparent as a pastor during this year, moving into realms that I never thought I would be. I've always wanted to feel that we had the ability to take our ministry further outside these walls. I always felt that we had more to offer than just to a one or two, but 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 we didn't know how to do it. But frustration set in. In when when the doors are told you got to close the doors frustration sets in when they tell you you can't come to church no more frustration will set in see sometimes frustration will come in from ser from serving but sometimes it will set in for a lack of serving but Ma Martha is upset because she has served faithfully she has prepared enduringly and her problem is that look like her sister a man is not able to understand the urgency of what she's trying to do. There are sometimes, amen, others do not see the vision the way you see it. Being that we're a pastor and you put together, listen, I'm not trying to bother nobody this morning, but it gets really challenging, you know, as a pastor in this time, you're trying to make sure that all the family and members of your congregation are able to get the word of God from you. Oh yeah, they could go somewhere else and get it, but amen, I don't know about about you, but if my family went to somebody else's house and ate every day, I don't think I'd like that too well. Hello, somebody. If you cook your food every day and they turn around and when lunchtime come, they tip out and go next door and eat, that probably wouldn't be the best thing for you. But you want to make sure your family is fed well in the congregation. And frustration will set in when you're cooking a meal and they still sleep on you. I, I didn't mean to go that way. But, 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 but frustration will come because because they don't see it the way you see it. They may not see it the way I see it. And right now, Mary does not see what Martha sees. But let me help you understand. One may say, Martha, why is Martha so frustrated? She's just sitting here. But let's read a little further and look at what she's being said. Because she says she's so upset that she understands who Jesus is. And I don't know whether she talked to Mary or not, 
But you know how it is when we'll say, well, you tell her what to do. She's not listening to me. So maybe he did, but hear what she says. Martha was cumbered. That means she was distracted. She was worried. She was upset about all, all uh, what was going on. And, and she said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister have left me to serve alone? Sometimes in the ministry you'll feel alone, my brothers and sisters. Sometimes, uh, preacher, preachers, you're going to find yourself uh, in the midnight hour wondering who's going to be there when you get there. Wondering who's going to help you when you make that next move because you feel like you're serving alone and frustration will creep up on you and you become, began to wonder how, what did I, remember I said frustration is feeling or expressing distress or annoyance, especially because of the inability, I can't change the situation. I know that if I had the right help, I could do what I need to do. If I had the right resource, I could do what I need to do, but because I can't get them, I'm frustrated. Oh, if I could just go where I needed to go, I could fix this situation, but I can't get them. I've tried, there's some things that you just utterly cannot do over the phone. There are some things you just cannot convey through Zoom. There are some things that you only can do in face to face. But because we are limited in that and some of us cannot accomplish what we need to do, we are frustrated in where we are. We know that the simplest thing is just to get up and just go next door. I'm not going to tell them off, but I know if I can look them in the face, we're going to get this fixed. But inability has caused frustration. Mary, here she is. Martha, excuse me, is dealing with Mary. And he says she summons Jesus to help me with this situation. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and a trouble about many things. I need you to pause there for a minute because up until this point, I've tried to explain to you that frustration comes in. See, what appears to be Jesus understands Martha better than she thinks. He, he, he un understands her better than she thinks because um, she's talking about Mary but Jesus is telling her, Martha I see you frustrated but, 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 but Mary not helping you is not just the problem here. See frustration is built up over period of time. She may be saying she's upset because Mary is not helping her, but that's really not the case at this particular point. There's some other things that are going on in her life. There's some other things that she's challenged with right now. And Jesus is bringing it to the surface and making sure you understand, Martha, there are trouble about many things. She only said that uh, my sister won't help me but Jesus has said the frustration level that you're carrying cannot have happened just because your sister has not helping you. See, you have to understand, amen, that, that she has dealt with some other things going on in her life. And I, I would don't behoove me to try to gap into her life and see what she's dealing with. But understand that, see, sometimes you don't have to know what's going on. You can look at the outcome and know there's something else going on. You don't have to be able to know what it was, but you know that something more is happening. And Jesus is looking at her. And now, why? Because, let me tell you one thing that you we understand. The problem here, Martha and Mary are good sisters. Martha and Mary are close sisters. They travel together. They serve together. They wash feet together. They got together when, they, when, when their brother died and called on Jesus. They was a close family. They was a tight family. And now you upset with Mary because she's choosing to sit down and listen to me speak the word of God. He said, no, Martha, you have, there's, you're troubled by many things. And he said, but you're frustrated. He's trying to let her know you're frustrated. You, 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 you may not be saying you're frustrated. You may not be sounding frustrated. But, the, but your attitude and the way you're handling this situation appears to let me know you're frustrated. 
And my brothers and sisters, in the season that we're in right now, as we come into the end of this year, and I know most of us, amen, uh, I know I date myself, but you, you can go back where they had the little pinball game, the pin, pinball game. Y'all know where you stand on the pinball game, and you hit that flipper, and that ball go up there and beat. Listen, sometimes you feel like a ping pong ball. You've been bounced around this year. You've been pushed around. You've been banged and beat up. But Mary, Martha has found us self banged and beat up and now she's got what we would call dealing with blinding frustration what is blinding frustration blinding frustration does this to you you can't what, what, what blinding frustration overwhelms you it can leave you blinded by the circumstance it can leave you left in a place where they can only see the problem but not the answer when the blinding frustration is set in, you have more complaining than you do complimenting. When blinding come in, I can see all your faults, but I can't see your good. Somebody help me this morning. It appears that 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 Martha problem is not dealing with the problems in her life. Her problem is not Mary, but the problem is she has not dealt with the problem in her own life. And when we find ourselves not dealing with our problem and you trying to help somebody else, you're going to make things worse on you. Hello, somebody. Uh huh. When you're going to be in the ministry and help folk and you're going to serve, you better make sure that you work on your problem before you try to fix somebody else's problem. Frustration has set in because she 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 finds herself upset. Because she's trying to deal with Mary's problem, but she's not dealing with her problems. That's why Jesus said, Martha, you got many things that are bothering you. You say it's Mary, but that's not it. There's some things going on in our lives. Every one of us at every moment, in certain moments of the day, are dealing with something. All of us at some moment are dealing with something. We've had to go through something, see, from one thing to another. So, so he goes on as he appears here and looks at it. She says she's, she's getting problems in her life. But focusing on her sister is not the answer. Focusing on her sister is not going to fix this. Something she could not change, now she has become frustrated. Remember, frustration comes when you're dealing with something you cannot change. Okay? And she cannot change her sister. I need you to understand, my brothers and sisters, you cannot change other folk. You cannot change people. No matter how much you love them, you can't change them. You can give them a word from the Lord. You can, you can, you can share with them, but you cannot change them. But when there's people that you love and you want to see their life better, you will get frustrated because you know it can happen. You know what would happen if it happened, but it doesn't. And blinding frustration has caused Martha to just look at her sister and what she's doing. Ah, see, this blinding frustration that she dealt with has not just been a one-time thing, and it never was a one-thing thing. If you remember when her brother Lazarus died, she was so frustrated that she called, summoned Jesus. Now you have to understand she knows who Jesus is. But she turns about and talks to Jesus in this manner and said, if you've been here, my brother would not be dead. If you'd been here, he would not have died. She's frustrated, so frustrated, she can't realize that Jesus, amen, is the beginning and the end. She's so frustrated, she cannot see that even though he's dead, he can live again. When you become frustrated and blind and frustration will cause you to miss the answer. Oh, let me help you this morning. Let me move on. She's frustrated. And... The blinding frustration, as I said earlier, will lead you into spiritual and emotional blindness where you can't see. And now Mary Martha has focused on her sister. She's frustrated, blaming her for her anger and her frustration. And it says that Martha has become frustrated and serving and fails to realize that in every aspect of our lives, God is talking to us. 
she's so frustrated that she fails to realize that in every aspect of our lives, God is talking to us. To every problem you face, God is talking to you. To every situation you're dealing with, God is talking to you. For every setback in your life, God is talking to you. For everything that you're dealing with, God is talking to you. So here, she's so blinded by frustration, she cannot see what God is trying to do. He's in your joy, he talks to you. In your peace, he talks to you. In your love, he talks to you. Even, yes, in your frustration. God talks to us in our frustration. Don't let your frustration keep you from praising God. He's done too much for us to let my frustration quench my spirit. He's done too much for us to allow frustration to quench you from giving God some glory. When faith loses its hope, do what David says. You must make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All glad. Amen. Praise his name. I think we ought to give God some praise. We ought to tell God thank you right now. Even in my frustration moment, I can tell God thank you. Because you've got to understand that it's some things I cannot change. But because of oh glory, Thank you, Jesus. What is going on with Martha? Martha is so preoccupied and worried about the preparations of the home. She missed the opportunity to listen to what the answer to the problem was. See, Mary, when he told Mary, he responds with her. Mary has chosen what is better. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not. Oh, God. I got, listen, you need to put a pin under that one. It says this. He has taken away. Thank you, Jesus. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. See, she's coming to Jesus and asking Jesus to change what Mary is doing. But he said, you, she's shown better, but, and, and I'm not going to let you take. What he's trying to take, say is, you're not going to take Mary's joy. You're not going to take Mary's peace. You have to understand when people get blind in frustration, they want you to be like them. When people get blind in frustration, they want you to feel what they feel. When people are blind in frustration, they want you to pay the price like they're paying. And if they're not happy, they don't want you to be happy. But Jesus Jesus is making a statement that she's got her, what she got in her, you can't take away. Oh, what does she have in her? She has a love for God inside of her. She has the love for the Lord. So much she said, if we don't eat today, I'm going to sit at his feet. If we don't get the clothes washed today, we're going to sit at his feet. If we don't get the clothes off the line, I'm going to sit here and hear what he has to say to me. When you have that much of God in you, listen, the better, he said, the better will not be taken away from her. The better will not be chosen. Mary has chosen this. And just like she chose it, Martha, you have an opportunity too. But what she was so upset, this is what we got going on. She's so upset that she cannot see the answer, and the answer is in the room with her. Blinded, blind in frustration, you can have the answer sitting in your house and don't see it. Hello, somebody. You can have the answer at the bank and don't see it. Oh, help me this morning. You can have the answer in the driveway and don't know and can't see it. When you get blind in frustration, you can see your help can be right there and you missed it. She was so blinded and with her frustration. Amen. And I, I believe she has this thing with me. Let me give y'all, I'm, I'm going to be transparent. When I get a little frustrated, I clean. Maybe that's why I ain't going to say my wife, you know, when she sees me frustrated, she just step out of the way because I'm going to start cleaning. See, Martha, maybe she frustration caused her, to, she wants to clean. She starts to doing things. But, but what happens is internal energy has to be used up. See, some folks, like I told you, some folks get frustrated. They cuss folks out. They walk out the door. But, 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 but you got to find a healthy way of dealing with it. So, so she used to cleaning. But the problem is it's, it's gotten so bad now she's blinded. You, she, she, it doesn't handle it. It's handling her. And Jesus is in the house. Jesus is right there with her and right there by her side. And she fails to see. This is the one that rose people from the dead. This is the one that has just walked up and down the coast of Galilee. He has saved, he has delivered, he's brought forth, and all that he have done, she still missed the fact that my answer is right here. There are some folk 
that has problems in their lives and leave the church? The answer's in the Lord. Some folks have a job and get frustrated because they ain't making enough money and quit their job and make no money. The answer is right there. Some frustration will get you blinded. But here, the answers come. Let me close today with a few scriptures that will help you understand what I'm saying. In Jeremiah 23 and 5, for the New Living Translation, it says this. For the time is coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous descendant from King David's line. He will be a king who rules with wisdom. He will do what is just and right throughout the land. The answer is in Jesus. God has sent his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whatever you're dealing with, we got an answer for it. Whatever you're frustrated with, there's an answer for it. Whatever you're dealing with today, there's an answer in Jesus. 1 Corinthians 1 and 30 from the New King James Version says this, but by his doing, you are in Christ Jesus who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Jesus has become our answer for whatever we're dealing with, whether it's financial, medical, physical, emotional, mental. Jesus Christ has the cure to what ails us. He died for our sins. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was above on his shoulders. And he said, by my stripes you heal. Whatever it is, is handled through Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 from the New Living Translation says this, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. All our frustrations come for what we cannot do on our own. We can't be right. We can't break away from sin. We can't get out of bad habits unless we accept the only true and everlasting sacrifice for our sin is Jesus Christ. Yes, there are people frustrated. They're fro now, this is a tough one. Some people are so frustrated that they can't get, quit drinking. They, go, they get so frustrated, they go get another drink. <laughs> some people are so frustrated they can't get off drugs, they get frustrated and go get some more drugs. But your frustration is blinding you to the true answer to your answer is Jesus Christ. The true answer to your deliverance, the one who made himself uh, as sin, who knew no sin, he was sacrificed for our deliverance. Romans 1 and 17, New King James Version. For it in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. And it is written, the just shall live by faith. And this is what I want you to do, and you'll take away the day from this word. To overcome blinding frustration, we must be willing to exchange our frustration for faith. We must be willing to change our frustration for faith. Because the just should live by his faith. There's some things that I cannot do. There's some things I'm not able to do. But by faith in God. See, what faith does is that faith shows the reality of what we hope for. Shows. It breaks the blind spell. When faith breaks your blind spell, faith allows you to take your Focus off what you can't do and move into what God can do. Your faith is in Jesus Christ. It says it, it shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of the things we cannot see. It's the evidence. The things that have us so bound up. The things that we can't do nothing about. Faith in Jesus Christ will solve that frustration. I can't do anything with it. Here's Mary, Martha, looking at Mary. She's, her, her anger's built. We know it's not. Jesus said, it's just not Mary. You got some other things going on in your life. Now, I know what y'all call them now. They say, she got issues. <laughs> she got issues. Well, I don't want to hurt, hurt nobody feeling, but all of us got some issues. And we got some issues that if not resolved will cause frustration. But I'm going to let you know today that faith in Jesus Christ will solve your frustration. 
And if, if you don't know Jesus as the solver of your frustration, if you don't know Jesus as the answer for your frustration, I submit to you today an appeal to step forth, to step out and allow God to handle your frustration. Allow Jesus to become the advocate for you, the intercessor for you, that your frustration, the scripture reminds us, all the heavy laden, listen, and heavy laden. He said, come unto me, all ye that heavy laden, take your yoke upon me, learn of me, for my yoke is easy, but my burdens are light. Your frustration. See, as you go out in the community, you go out into the city, I, pr I, I pray you go at the right time. Don't go at lunchtime and don't go at five in the afternoon because getting a parking space might just frustrate you. But it's really not getting a parking space. It's some other things going on in your life. If I could just bother somebody for a second, many times you find people frustrated because everybody want to park at the door. Everybody can't park up at the front of the store. And now I find some people say, I need to work out, but I want to park at the door. Why not just park out there and get your exercise walking up to the door? Your blinded frustration will cause you to miss the opportunity that God is creating for you to get what you need. Blinding frustration caused Martha to begin to turn on her sister. Blinding frustration during this holiday season will cause family members to turn on one another, go against one another. But I challenge you to, to, to take your frustration and give it to Jesus. Allow the Lord to help with the things that you cannot do anything with. We're going to pray today. We're going to ask you now, wherever you are, wherever you're sitting, wherever you're dealing, amen, focus your eyes on the screen, bow your head, put your mind on Jesus Christ. He is the author and the finish of our faith. Just like he knew, he heard what Martha was saying, but he's able to tell her, Martha, you got many things going on. She didn't tell him. He already knew. I want to let you know he already knows what's going on in your life. Do you care? She said, Jesus, do you care if my sister don't help me? He said, your sister can't answer your problem. Your sister can't fix your problem. Your boss can't fix your problem. Your wife can't fix your problem. Your husband can't fix your problem. Your mother and father can't fix your problem. There's some things only Jesus Christ can do. And today is your day if you're ready to give up your frustration. Faith in Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, here we are once again. At that place, at that crossroad of dealing with this life, dealing with this frustration, dealing with this heaviness. Oh, yes, even though we know you are the beginning and the end, you're in the present, you're in the future, we will say, Lord, if you'd have been here, you could have did this. Why did you allow that to happen that way? Why did you allow? Why did you take this one? Why couldn't you take that one? We got all these questions that are driving frustration. But if we could just find a way to get to a place and say, Lord, you know what's best for me. You know what's best for us. My blindness is keeping me from seeing that you are making the best choice for the world. I'm not just the only one you got to deal with. I'm not the only one you got to handle. My home is not the only home that you got to work on. I understand, God, that there's more to meet the eye. And your eyes is in every place, beholding the good and the evil. So this morning, God, where well, we release this frustration of getting what we want, getting it our way, and say, Lord, not my will, but your will. Not my way, but your way. And I will begin to thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you're going to do because you're the only wise God. You make no mistake. 
So we thank you this morning and we glorify you and we will go into this season. We will go into the holiday season lifting up your name, not carrying our burdens, but we bring our burdens to you this morning and we lay them at your feet just as Mary. See, Martha didn't understand, but Mary was laying at your feet, bringing her burdens at your feet. She didn't have to tell him her problem. She brought herself because we are our problem. And she laid herself at Jesus' feet. And Martha, he has summoned her to come. And I, come, I summon you this morning. Lay yourself at the feet of Jesus this morning and let him help you. Father, we thank you today. We give you glory and honor. Lord, save those that are not saved today. If you will just confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Ask him to forgive you your sins. Ask him to come into your heart. He will save you. He will change you. And seek the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That God would not just save you, but would keep you until he returns. Father, we submit this unto you today. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. 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 I want to tell God thank you this morning. Tell him thank you. Thank you. Blinded frustration. I leave you with this. That blinded frustration will rob you of all the good that God is trying to do in your life. All the good he's trying to present before you. You can only see other people's fault. You can only see what's not working. Blinded frustration is taking place. But today, you found an answer. And you found a way out of this thing. And his name is Jesus. So take it and run with it, and he will do you good. Thank you for tuning in this morning with us. We thank you for being a part of this service, and we pray God will continue to bless and keep you till we meet again. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen.